Hey guys, Joe Hancock here with Fit Philosophy. I've had a few questions from some people who are looking to maybe jump into a career in fitness, just sort of like I have, and they wanted to know how to pass the ACSM uh, Certified Personal Trainer uh, exam course, what have you. I mean, it depends on how you go about it. They have courses, they have webinars that you can buy, get into, and they kind of hand you the information. Um, I'm kind of an individual case because I'm kind of a fitness nerd, I guess, um, nerd of human movement, physiology, science, and things like that. So I already knew a great deal of the anatomy before I ever cracked open the books. Um, I spent maybe a week studying for it. I think I really hit the books hard for three days. Uh, from what I've seen online and read from other folks, that's not typical. Most people spend about two weeks studying. I think that's more typical for somebody who maybe knows maybe who's maybe good at exercise and wants to help people but don't know the science specifically for this particular course so i'm going to give you a little bit of rundown on what i did what i think is important and what maybe you can do to uh, enhance your chances of passing and increase your knowledge um, first of which everyone knows this one the acsm resource for the personal trainer um, this book you should read cover to cover um, not everything in this book would be covered in the test but i'll tell you from experience that there is a wealth of knowledge in here that will make you a better and more effective trainer and will assist you in building a better business for yourself if that's what you're going to do. Um, it ranges everything from anatomy and physiology to uh, you know brushes over some nutrition, some basic uh, you know macro, micro, nutrients, uh, vitamins, minerals, things like that, um, as well as uh, spotting and different exercise movements, uh, but you really want to get a, you know, even more beyond the test. I mean, you can study for the test or you can study to be a really great trainer. And my advice to you would be if you're looking to get into this field, especially if you're going to go into business for yourself, there's a billion personal trainers out there. You know, this is one of the harder uh, CPT exams that you can take. Um, you want to set yourself apart by growing your knowledge as much as possible. Um, next up, the uh, ACSM Certification Review book. Um, this is really great because it has a lot of real world examples. So you can take the knowledge that you gained in this book and apply it to cases that are in this book. Um, it'll allow you to kind of give you a practical application of that knowledge so that you can be more prepared the first time you're standing in front of a client and they're asking you questions and you're looking at their medical history and you, you don't want to look confused, right? So it's really important you dig into this. Some of the examples and some of the, some of the cases and the, the situations will be re represented on the exam. Um, thirdly is uh, ACSM's guideline for exercise testing and prescription. If you're the type of person that programs individual workouts, um, which I imagine all personal trainers would do that, um, but I also program for groups, this is actually a very helpful book in understanding how to assess an individual or a group of people um, and then prescribing exercise to them based on what their current health is, what their health history is, their age, their gender, what their current capabilities are. Um, that's especially important for me since I, I dabble primarily in functional fitness, um, which has a huge range of exercises, but also skill levels. Like I can't give ring muscle ups to somebody who's never done anything like that before. Um, so I have to be very specific with my programming to each individual. Um, if you want to take a shortcut on this one, I would say chapters three and four, six and seven are the most important in this one for passing the exam. Uh, again, if you want to take the time to expand your knowledge and be the best trainer ever, I would hit this one cover to cover too. Now, just to want to cover something because one of the biggest questions I get from my clients and even from prospective clients is, hey, what do I eat, right? So it depends on the state, but most, most people, most states, I believe, you have to be licensed by the state in order to prescribe a meal plan for somebody. That means a registered dietitian or nutritionist. I don't know the details. Um, what I tell my clients is I, I can make I can make recommendations, very broad and general recommendations. I What I end up doing is I show them two different um, nutrition 
styles, if you will, paleo and zone. Those tend to be the most popular within the functional fitness community. Um, what I do with those is I invite them to experiment with their own body, document how they feel, how, how is their performance in the gym, you know, things like that. And then they can tune it based on their, you know, I can help them tune it based on their feedback, but ultimately what they eat, when they eat it, is gonna be up to them because I'm not a dietitian and I'm not a nutritionist and I cannot make meal plans. So if you're going into the fitness industry as a personal trainer, you need to understand there is gonna be a, a marked difference between training somebody in the gym and being a nutritionist and a dietitian. So it's an important distinction to make. Anyway, if you're looking to take the test soon, I wish you the best of luck. Hope to see you in the gym.